Hello. Today I uh, am finally going to talk about a movie I've wanted to talk about uh, <clears throat> for a while on, on this channel. I uh, wanted to talk about this earlier, but other stuff. Uh, also uh, caught my interest in discussing films. Um, but finally I'm able to set time and discuss this film. Goodfellas. Um, it's 30 years old this year, so, you know, uh, this, uh, so that's a great anniversary and I think a great reason to talk about this film. Um, I'm going to be uh, very frank that this is, is one of those other films that not much I can say that has been said before. Um, you know, it's the story of Henry Hill and how he got to to be a gangster, essentially. How he rose the ranks, became quite respected, and then by the end of it all, he, uh, uh, fear of his life, he went into witness protection after uh, essentially, well, basically ratting out on people, as they say. And how uh, even in the film... Uh, when we see him young, not played by Ray Liotta, we hear, you know, uh, De Niro, uh, Jimmy, talk to him uh, before Ray Liotta is ever uh, chronologically, at least, introduced in the film, even though, uh, uh, timeline-wise, obviously there's that iconic opening scene with Ray Liotta, De Niro, and Joe Pesci. And there's a body in the back, and how uh, they, you know, yeah, kill him, <laughs> kill the body. They thought he was already dead, but turns out he wasn't. So that's it's. Then obviously later in the film, we see how all that transpired. Um, there's so, there's just so many iconic moments from this film. Uh, it's one of those films that you really need to see to truly believe, um, or. To or at least to really appreciate it, um, I should say. Um, obviously, I'm a fan of gangster films. Talked about the Godfather films. Um, there are other gangster films I want to talk about. One particular next week, I hope to discuss. Um, another iconic film. And I'm sure, you know, having done the Godfather trilogy earlier in the year and now doing Goodfellas... Uh, uh, there, there might be a very uh, good clue as to uh, which film between Godfather Two and also Goodfellas Godfather Three, because uh, this is also the, obviously again their thirtieth anniversary of not just Goodfellas but also the Godfather Part Three. Um, there's one particular uh, film uh, of the '80s that was very well liked. I don't believe I really even need to say what f that film is, but yeah, this 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 film, you know, made by Martin Scorsese, oh, one of my favorite filmmakers. Uh, you know, there are people who say there's like of the seventies, eighties, and nineties, there seems to be at the very least one iconic film from Scorsese: nineteen seventies Taxi Driver, nineteen eighties Raging Bull. 1990s, Goodfellas. Uh, all three of these films star Robert De Niro. Um, and it's interesting how Scorsese actually wanted Al Pacino to play De Niro's part. Um, and I think in a way it would have been interesting to see uh, him in that role. In this role, um, of course, you know it's played by De Niro, and it's sort of hard to imagine anybody but Robert De Niro in this role. Also, I have a feeling that probably De Niro would be in this film somehow, in some way. Yet, if it wasn't as Jimmy, I don't know who De Niro would play. Um, maybe he would have a cameo of, of some sort. Um, you know, that's always a possibility. Um, 
but I can't imagine uh, how De, uh, De Niro not being in this at all. It's also sort of hard to see Pacino as Jimmy, but it would be interesting. Uh, I'm not saying it could never have been done. Pacino is a great actor, yet at the same time, it's just a, it's one of those things you're not totally sure about how you could picture somebody now after you already know about uh, the casting, how it is. Uh, no, well, now. Uh, uh, it's one of those, like, what could have been, essentially. Um, and it's interesting how he wanted Pacino in this film, which obviously by now he has worked with Scorsese and Pacino have finally worked together with in um, The Irishman. And uh, I enjoyed that film. I thought it was a great film. Um, and this is a great film also. Uh, a lot of people believe this deserved the Academy Award for Best Picture and Director. And I do believe... I yes, I do agree with that sentiment. You know, I do believe those are correct. Now, Dances with Wolves, which also turns thirty this year, was really good. It was a great film. But Goodfellas is a better movie. It's just the the story is very very interesting. How somebody who wanted to be a gangster got to be a gangster, but then how when things began to really fall apart and their life is on the line as well as their family have to make the decision of going into witness protection and then leaving that life as well as essentially ratting on everybody in order to save themselves. Um, it's quite an interesting uh, uh, film in that, you know, it's a different angle of the rise and fall of gangster films. You know, usually with those, what happens? The gangster at the end gets killed. Um, it isn't always the case that, at least not in films that are as iconic as Goodfellas, where in the end, the guy you followed is alive. Um, yes, they lose everything, but usually they sort of I guess, as I say, I could get their comeuppance and die. Well, here he lives, but, you know, he lives the rest of his... As he says at the end, he to live the rest of his life as a schnook, as an average nobody. <clears throat> um, I think that's an interesting, also, thing to have in the film, how Henry Hill uh, views the average person's life, you know, not being a gangster, being just meh, like what kind of life is this? And also in the beginning just shows you how he wanted to always be a gangster and love that life. Uh, and he illustrates also early on, to him being a gangster would be is like the best thing in the world better than, you know, um, being president of the United States. Essentially would be, you know, the most powerful man in the world. Though, you know, gangsters often do have politicians in their pockets, so um, at least some of them do. And it kind of makes, at least to pay them off so anything happens, like trying to, you know, one has a business that on one hand, you know, is legitimate, but there might be another business or a side of that business that is a bit uh, eh, going into some illegal activities. You know, got a politician here uh, that can help make any sort of problems go away, you know, which then, I guess, you know, uh, brings the question of who is really powerful in that situation, is it? Is the politician all that powerful? Like here in America, you know, we elect uh, people into political offices. Um, so, in a lot of ways, you know, the people have power in that. You know, 
But then, you know, there's the aspect of once they're in power, will they be corrupt? Will they take bribes or whatever, look, sort of look the other way? You know, sometimes, you know, cops do that. They're paid off. Um, would, you know, politicians, would they do that or, or not? And if they don't, could that possibly endanger their lives? I know this isn't necessarily part of that film, but I think that's something that kind of, uh, for me, kind of, uh, as later on as I've watched the film and I've thought about this and how certain gangsters, you know, higher up, you know, they have, they pay off people. Uh, sometimes, you know, have them on their payroll. Like, how, how, how powerful are gangsters, at least of this time, that the film, uh, takes place in that time period you know were in many ways gangsters more powerful than politicians and I think to a degree there is uh, you could say yes to that that gangsters did have some political power on their side that if anything went south they could call them and yay yeah, you accept the money for me now. You know, hey, do this for me. Help me get out of this situation. You know, and even if they uh, wind up in prison, like we see, well, what happens? Well, uh, they get to still essentially live the high life in prison. And and I always found that scene to be very, just very good. And one thing I always liked about uh, this film, and also is very constant in many of Scorsese's films, is you know, dinner scenes, like Italian dinners, and it's just, you just really want to eat that food, uh, or be a part of uh, that group of people, or that, that family, just eat. Uh, I just, I, that's just, that's something else I always find with this film, with the, not just the jail scene, but when they go visit, you know, Tommy's mom and they're eating, you know, before, you know, what happens in the opening scene happens, you know, chronologically, uh, how, uh, with also Martin Scorsese's mother playing Tommy's mom, you know, Joe Pesci's mom, um, she fixes them food when they go to try and You know, have to get shovels and stuff for a, you know, uh, for burying uh, that man, the the man in the back. You know, that's uh, you know who uh, told, tells him to tells Tommy to get a shine box, and that uh, that doesn't go well. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't go over well with Tommy. So. See, would have been smart to never mention that uh, in the film, but, you know, uh, it happened for the film's purpose, and, well, we know uh, what happens there. I know that a lot of things that are said to have happened did not happen, such as the guy who plays, who is essentially Joe Pesci's character, his fate is not as cut and dry. There's... People don't definitively, definitively know what happened to him. Um, let's just say that. It's very good to say that he died, but how he died... Don't definitely know for sure. I guess sort of like Jimmy Hoffa, you could say, which obviously Scorsese later made <laughs> a film about what happened there, and uh, yeah. But it's it's interesting to also read about what actually happened and how reality and the film differ. But I always find that interesting with any film that's based on a true story. Uh, 
I love this film, and I know I've just talked about various points of this film, but, you know, just to go and from beginning to end with this movie, it's like, yeah, it doesn't really do justice. Might as well just watch the film. I really love this movie. It's one of my favorite gangster films. Um, not my favorite, obviously, you know, but as I've said, uh, you know, Godfather for me is my personal favorite. It's, um, that film's in my top ten. Um, I don't know where I would put this film uh, on a list of uh, from top 30, 40, 50, whatever. I don't know. Um, I, f I actually ma managed to get a top 20 down. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this is not in my top 20 favorite films. But maybe even my top 30 or 40, I could see this being there being in one of those lists um, but you know that's me um, what do you th think of this film do you enjoy it do you not like it um, is it your favorite gangster film of all time you know mobster film whatever you want to call it or do you just d dislike it because of the way the story is or uh, how certain characters act you just find it appalling due to the violence that is in the film or even the language you know some people have problems with a lot of bad la uh, bad language in films some people absolutely hate Tarantino films for that reason they don't aren't able to get past all the swearing though I would also probably say that uh, then a lot of a good amount of Scorsese films would not be for those people if you're not interested in Tarantino films because of the swearing. And this film has a good amount of swearing in it, um, particularly by Joe Pesci, who won an Academy Award, um, and he didn't believe he was ever going to win. And you can watch the clip, and he, his name is called as a nominee before he's as the winner you can see him, he just shakes his head like it's a real he seems like like this is a real waste of time of me just being here you know because I have no chance of winning and then he wins and then he just says it's my privilege thank you and he just leaves you know it was one of the shortest speeches of all time at the Academy Awards you know short sweet to the point um, Though, he didn't thank Scorsese, he didn't thank De Niro, or anyone else associated with the film. But I found that interesting, and yet I'm like, that's just Joe Pesci. Um, this is a great film, as I've already said, but it really is. It's incredible. Um, would definitely be my top five, I would say, Scorsese films. I believe so. I haven't looked at <laughs> or thought about my ranking of Scorsese films, but I believe it is my top five. Top ten for sure, um, but I believe it is somewhere in my top uh, five. Um, but anyway, uh, I think I've talked long enough about this film. Uh, praised it with saying as just general stuff that anyone else can say but I think that also just gives a testament to this film there's so much that has already been said that at this point uh, I don't know how many new things one can add to the conversation um, that doesn't mean it's impossible um, but I don't know for me I just yeah it's just, it's a really great film and that's all I wanted to say. Um, also, uh, I just want to throw out yesterday, because today, as you're seeing it, is July 17th. So that means, obviously, yesterday was the 16th. Um, yesterday was the 10th anniversary of Inception. And today was supposed to be the day Tenet came out, but because of the whole lockdown thing situation uh, it's been pushed back till August uh, 12th and Inception is apparently supposed to have a uh, 
re-release at the end of July. It's supposed to happen already today, or maybe yesterday. Details on that seem to be very conflicting uh, now, especially since it didn't happen according to plan. But, uh, I, uh, uh, Inception's a great film. Uh, it's ten years old. Uh, Goodfellas, you know, great film too. Different genres, but, you know, I just wanted to say that. Uh, just in case, uh, because on my channel I've noted how much I enjoy the films of Christopher Nolan, so I thought it was just appropriate for me to say something at the very end of this video. Um, uh, I, I hope to be able to see Inception, the theater chain that's supposed to release, re-release that film and other films it, it has not opened like they said in July only in certain states and certain cities in those states uh, where the theaters are have they opened so I'm confused about that I sent a message to uh, them about this about why isn't it at all opened in the Midwest at all. The theater chain, you know, Cinemark, why are, why haven't they opened that? Um, and I think it would be cool also to, because they're apparently in those theaters that are opened, you know, they're re-releasing old films to help get people back into the theaters. I think it would be actually cool to have Goodfellas amongst, you know, Inception and other great films. I mean, it's it's the tenth or the thirtieth anniversary of uh, Goodfellas. Tenth anniversary of Inception. What better time to help get people into the theaters than showing a, an iconic, beloved film like Goodfellas on the big screen? I think that would really help uh, people to want to at least head back to at least experience it for the very first time on the big screen because I've never seen it on in the theater. I'd like to. Um, I'd also like to see Taxi Driver on the big screen. I, I didn't get to it for the 40th anniversary, but there's other, there's various reasons for that that I'm not going to get into here. But I'd like to see Goodfellas on the big screen. Hopefully that happens this year, but maybe it won't. Perhaps for the 35th anniversary, uh, that will happen. I don't know. I can only just guess and speculate as to if that could ever be a possibility. But anyway, enough of that tangent, I guess, added at the end of this video. Apologies for that, anyway. But uh, that's all I have to say uh, this time. Next week will be another gangster film. And I promise I will take a break from that because I have no gang other gangster films I really want to talk about in the near future after the next one. Uh, I don't know what I want to talk about after this, but you know, that doesn't mean I won't find something but to talk about. So, yeah. Love good fellas. Uh, great film. Uh, and yeah, all I have to say is watch it if you've never watched it before. And if, uh, you know, just at least give it a chance. Uh, and if you have watched it before, maybe watch it again if you enjoy it. And that's really all I have to say. Uh, I hope you all have a great day. Have a great weekend and a great week and I'll see you all next time.